Hello and welcome. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Today we're going to talk about cryptocurrency news, specifically the New York Stock Exchange, the U.S. government, and crypto. So this is going to be a great little piece. I hope you really enjoy it. I want you to know that I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. This is my opinion. I'm not smarter than you, and you're smarter than you realize. Do not trust what I say. Do your own research. Always a good thing to do is to do your own research, regardless what the subject is, whether it's a financial asset or a political opinion or even just something you want to buy for your home. Um, especially if it's an expensive item that you're going to purchase. Just do your own research into it and make a good decision. So we're looking specifically at an Atlanta businesswoman expected to be named U.S. Senator. Now, this is currently this is at the stage of rumor, but it sounds like it has a high potential of actually happening. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp has decided to appoint a Republican donor and financial services executive for the U.S. Senate seat being vacated by three-term Senator Johnny Isaacson, a GOP political... Uh, where did it go? Johnny Isaacson, a GOP political consultant, told the Associated Press on Monday... His choice of Kelly Loeffler, a political newcomer, defies Republicans who had pushed him to choose Rep. Doug Collins, one of the staunchest defenders of President Trump. The consultant spoke on condition of on an anonymity on Monday because Kemp has yet to publicly announce the decision, which comes after weeks of speculation over his choice for a Senate seat Democrats are hoping to win in 2020. So what's the point of all this? Well, Kelly Loeffler is the point of all this. She is the president of a cryptocurrency exchange that's owned by the New York Stock Exchange. And so if she becomes a U.S. senator, then there's every reason to think that she will be influenced to make decisions that will benefit Wall Street, the New York Stock Exchange, and the cryptocurrency exchange that her and her husband own called BACKT, B-A-K-K-T. Now, I really shouldn't say that they own it. They have the, the owners of the New York Stock Exchange have a large share of the BACKT exchange, but BACKT is also owned by Microsoft and Starbucks. So the three of them teamed together, spent four hundred, almost $500 billion and four years building a cryptocurrency exchange to trade Bitcoin futures contracts. So the I just want to give you a little bit more information about who the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange is um, because Kelly used to work for that company and now she's uh, working on the backed uh, stock exchange and her husband still owns and is involved is one of the chief executives on the board. Uh, for the Intercontinental Exchange. The Intercontinental Exchange is a company that owns the New York Stock Exchange. They also own 12 other regulated exchanges all over the world and quite a number of, of central clearing houses. So most people are pretty familiar with what, what the New York Stock Exchange is and what it's all about. Um, central clearing houses are used when somebody buys a futures contract and those clearing houses are responsible for making sure that whatever that futures contract was for, that the person who purchased it actually receives those goods and services. So if you had bought a barrel of oil, they're going to make sure you get your barrel of oil. Um, and that's just a part of what a clearing house does. There's a lot more to it, but I'm trying to simplify this just for the purposes of this discussion. Another thing I want to simplify is the size of the company that owns the New York Stock Exchange and these 12 other regulated exchanges around the world, and they do around $6.28 billion a year. Now, this is important because we want to understand what happened that prompted the Intercontinental Exchange to invest almost half a billion dollars four years into building a cryptocurrency exchange 
And what does that have to do with Kelly Loeffler, who's the current CEO, becoming a senator? So the first part of that is um, the reason why the Intercontinental Exchange decided to open up a cryptocurrency exchange is really pretty simple. They saw what Binance and some of the other cryptocurrency exchanges were doing. Binance was making now 446 million in profits in a single year in 2018 is phenomenal, especially when you consider the fact. Um, I thought it was in this article, but but Binance started in July of 2017. We're talking about a company that's just now two years old. And they're already doing as much as Deutsche du 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 Bank and, and at half a billion dollars. In fact, I've heard some comments say that they were actually making closer to one billion dollars since their inception. And so a billion dollar company in two years that was started in 2017 with a 15 million dollar investment got the attention of the intercontinental exchange because here you've got a cryptocurrency business that is doing exactly what the the new york stock exchange is famous for and that's trading you know trading uh assets back and forth between people and allowing people to trade those assets buy those assets and sell those assets and and for them to have done half a billion dollars a year for a two-year-old company that gets their attention now Binance well uh, let me go back the Intercontinental Exchange has been working on their exchange long before Binance even existed but the point was is that they were sharp enough to see the writing on the wall and to see hey cryptocurrency is making these various exchanges a huge fortune in fees and so they want to get a piece of the pie. In fact, when you think about it, Wall Street or the New York Stock Exchange is known as the greediest people in the world. Well, let's stop and take a look at that. What makes Wall Street the greediest people in the world? Why is Wall Street greedy? Did you get a good answer? I'm sure your answer is going to be a little bit different than my answer. So let me give you my answer since you're not able to give me your feedback. But if you want to, please leave a comment below on this uh, on the YouTube channel. You can make comments below. I would love to hear why you think Wall Street is greedy. I'd love to hear your feedback and comments. The reason I think Wall Street is greedy is because that's what they sell. If you were, uh, if, if you made spaghetti sauce you'd be an expert in spaghetti sauce if you made socks you'd be an expert in socks if you made automobiles you'd become an expert in automobiles just in order to build a good product and compete with the other people in your industry well what does wall street sell they sell an opportunity to buy an asset so that you can make profit from it in other words, they basically are selling greed. They're selling you the opportunity to invest money and profit from it. So in, in a sense, they're really, they're, they're selling profit slash greed. And so for them to be the, the greediest people in the world is almost a natural byproduct of the product they sell. Now that we understand that the primary motivation between, behind Wall Street, the primary motivation behind the Intercontinental Exchange, the primary motivation for Kelly Loeffler, who's the CEO of a cryptocurrency exchange and might become a senator, is she's going to want to make sure that the backed exchange, that the New York Stock Exchange, continue to be healthy and grow. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed over the years, I mean, yes, BACT produced a lot of revenue, $6.2 billion. But if you go to your typical, you know, your TD Ameritrade or your E-Trade or a Robinhood account, 
you'll notice that the fees that you've been charged over the years have dropped dramatically. In fact, you can find places to buy and sell stocks on the stock market where it's there are no fees. It's fee free for you to buy and sell stocks. And so the primary source of revenue for companies like the New York Stock Exchange and the Intercontinental Exchange is changing. And they have to devise additional ways to continue to build revenue so that these companies, these businesses will continue to thrive and survive. And so a big part of the backed exchange for uh, the New York Stock Exchange for ICE is they're trying to secure a long-term future for themselves. Now, I've heard some people criticizing ICE and the backed exchange and saying that their, their primary purpose is to destroy cryptocurrency. Well, that would be contrary to everything that they do and they believe. I mean, if, if you're an expert at investing and making money, then it would make no sense to invest almost half a billion dollars into building a cryptocurrency exchange and then it not succeed. And so even though the backed exchanges had a slow start over time, I'm confident that it will continue. So will Wall Street change the cryptocurrency industry? And, and my quick and short answer to that is absolutely they will. But it was going to change anyway. Whether or not Wall Street got involved in a heavy, in a, in a significant way, um, it was the, the cryptocurrency industry was going to change. In order for it to gain mass adoption, it's going to have to change and evolve. So that's why I have this scale up here. Do you know what company built, manufactured this scale? I know it says Dayton money weight on the top here, but the company that manufactured this scale in 1930 is a company you've probably familiar with called IBM. That's right, the computer company IBM. They have, uh, they, they were the first ones to build a Windows computer, uh, uh, IBM PC. Um, and, and Windows itself, Microsoft itself, was the first operating system that ran on the IBM PCs. And IBM has been making mainframes for years. But in 1930, IBM was manufacturing meat scales and produce scales for grocery stores. So you can see how much IBM has changed over the years. They've evolved from a company that builds scales to a company that does software engineering and computer consulting and has mainframes and a whole variety of other businesses. In fact, if you're familiar with Lenovo laptops, that was the original IBM PC company and they rolled it off from IBM and it's now known as Lenovo. So what's the point of all of this? Wall Street's going to have an impact on cryptocurrency and the cryptocurrency industry. It's going to change it, but Wall Street's coming from a perspective of they want to make money, and the way they're going to make money with cryptocurrency is by charging fees for it. And they're in an industry that's beginning to hurt because their fees are going away. You know, if you today we talked about how you can go to a, a, a quite a number of online trading companies um, and get free, you know, zero fees, pay zero fees for your your trading. Um, but it wasn't that long ago that that these companies were actually making ten dollars, twenty five dollars, fifty dollars for you just to buy and sell stocks. And so all of that has changed dramatically and they have to find other ways to be successful. So would Senator Kelly Loeffler help or hurt crypto? I really believe the answer is going to be both. She's going to make some decisions that's going to help crypto and some decisions that will hurt crypto. But ultimately, we have to keep in mind that her priority will be to help the intercontinental exchange. And so some of the things that are good for the intercontinental exchange are also good for cryptocurrency because they need the backed exchange to succeed. 
In fact, for them to really succeed, eventually the backed exchange, uh, their their intention, and, and they haven't publicly said this, but I think I could assume it to be true just because this is who they are. They don't run tiny, itty-bitty, uh, I did $50 on this exchange yesterday. They run exchanges that the wealthy and institutional investors... Let me put it this way. Can you go and open a stock account on the New York Stock Exchange? I know that I can't. And that's because I'm not an institutional investor. In fact, I have to use something like uh, TD Ameritrade or Fidelity or TradeStation or one of the other online exchanges in order to buy and sell stocks that are sold through the New York Stock Exchange. And so the only way for me to get access to the New York Stock Exchange is through a smaller broker. My point is this, it wouldn't surprise me at all that the ultimate goal of the backed of, of the backed exchange is that eventually they would become the main place that cryptocurrency uh, is traded, but you but retail investors would have to go to some other brokerage firm that's external to the backed exchange, such as your trade station, your TD Ameritrade, um, you know, et cetera, et cetera, all fidelity, all of those other exchanges. Um, and that the regular, you know, average retail investors wouldn't be dealing with the backed exchange directly, but would rather go through an other broker and connect up to it just like you do with the New York Stock Exchange. So time will tell how all this plays out. But I do believe that to a large degree, uh, Senator Kelly Loeffler, should be beneficial for the cryptocurrency industry. Um, so that's all I have for today. I hope that you enjoyed it. How can I be of service to you? Do you have any questions? Do you have any disagreements? I'd love to hear from you. As always, if you disagree with anything that I said, please leave a comment below. You can make a public comment in the, in the comments on the YouTube channel. If you want to make a private comment, you can always do so by... Um, by using the link to the Google form and the Google form will allow you to communicate with me privately rather than putting out a public comment. Um, and I, I, I hope that you will like, subscribe, and hodl. In the meantime, have a fantastic day.